Okay, so we, what we want to look at today is finding the area between two curves. Now something to be something to understand here is that you are not going to be given you're not going to be given boundaries. Okay? So you're going to have to find boundaries. So I want to talk about this in concept first and then we'll look at the specifics. Um, here we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and notice they show a plus k because if you shifted both graphs up or down the same amount for both of them, it's not going to change the area between them. Okay? So we're trying to find this area contained right here. Okay? Now, getting an integral gives us the area under a curve. You guys know that. So but basically what we're going to do here is we're going to use that idea, and you'll notice if I were to find the integral of the f of x function, the top function, that's going to give me not only the area that I want, but also all of this area down below. Okay. If I find the integral of g of x, though, that's going to give me the extra area down below. Okay. So if you think about the concept, the integral of the top function gives you everything. The integral of the bottom function is all the area you don't want. So if you subtract that, that will then give you, that will then give you this area that we do want between the two curves. Okay? So if we're subtracting areas, really what we're doing is we're subtracting integrals. Okay? And you'll notice this is how they have it set up here. We are taking the area underneath f and we are subtracting the area underneath g. Okay? And then here comes one of the properties that we learned earlier in chapter 18 and that is if you have the integral of or if you are subtracting two integrals you can write that as a single integral with subtraction inside of it. Okay, obviously we took it apart. Here we're putting it together into one integral. Okay? So how do we come up with all of this? So let's look at, there's three basic steps here that we're going to follow. First of all, how do we know what A and B are? Okay, well, A and B define the interval that we're going to integrate over and in order to do that we need to find the intersection of the curves okay what points do these curves intersect at here we have two okay so we're going to integrate from the left side a to the right side b okay Secondly, determine which function is greater within the interval. So I'm going to pick some value in my interval AB. I'm going to evaluate both of the functions at that value. And obviously whichever one is greater is going to give us our top function. Okay. And then we have our formula. So the last part here is then set up your formula so that it's the top function <clears throat> minus the bottom function, okay? And integrate, and that will give you the area between the two curves, okay? So it's a relatively simple concept, okay? 
the integral of the top gives us too much area. The integral of the bottom gives us that extra that we don't want, so we can subtract them. Okay? Now, you were given a picture, you were given a graph, and in our two examples, we're going to see the graph, but we're also going to mathematically look at why or how we could figure out even if we didn't see the graph, okay? Because this, um, you know, you're not going to be given the graph all the time, all right? So let's look at an example here. We want to find the area of the region enclosed by the line y equals x plus 2 and the parabola y equals x squared plus x minus 2, all right? So you can see here the area that we're looking for. But let's, uh, let's actually find it and imagine as though we don't know what it looks like yet, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is find the interval, okay? For the interval, we need intersection points. How are we going to find intersections? Set the two equal to each other? Yeah, they're both equal to y, so let's set them equal to each other. x plus 2 equals x squared plus x minus 2. We have a quadratic here, so I get everything on one side. 0 equals x squared minus 4. And, of course, then x equals plus or minus 2. All right. Now, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that is where the two intersections occur. But now we know we're going to integrate. When we do the integration, we're going to do the integration from negative 2 to positive 2. Okay. So now we need to figure out which one is on top. Okay, so we pick a number somewhere between negative 2 and positive 2. So we're going to try x equals 0, because that's easy. All right, so if y equals x plus 2, if we give 0, or if we evaluate at 0, we get a positive 2. All right. If we try it in our x squared plus x minus 2, we're going to get 0 squared plus 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. So, obviously, neg uh, positive 2 is greater than negative 2, so this function is on top. Okay? So, now we're able to set up our integral, okay? We're integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. The x plus 2 is the top function, so I'm going to do x plus 2 minus the bottom function, x squared plus x minus 2, okay? Now, one question was raised last period. Can't we just integrate them both separately and subtract at the end? Yes, you can. Okay? However, as you can see in this example, when we do this, by subtracting before <laughs> we integrate, notice we've given ourselves negative x squared plus 4. Oops. Um, be consistent. A very simple function to integrate, okay? And we only have to evaluate once. So rather than integrating, evaluating both of them separately, and then subtracting, here we're subtracting the functions, integrating it once, okay? So now it's a negative x cubed over 3 plus 4x, okay, 
and we're going to evaluate that from negative 2 to positive 2. Okay? So notice I only have to use my fundamental theorem of calculus once rather than doing it twice with two separate functions and then subtracting. Okay? By the way, one note I want to point out here. Some of you on the homework, I didn't take off for this, but at this point, you've already taken the integral. Some of you, instead of writing it like this to show that you're evaluating at negative 2 and 2, you were taking the integral and then writing this. You left the integral sign in there. Um, and I know what you were thinking. You were thinking, oh, I still need to evaluate, so I'm not done. But that's not proper because you've already taken the integral. Okay? We would just put a vertical line after what we got for our antiderivative. And now we're going to evaluate. Okay, so we have a negative 8 over 3 plus 4 times 2 is 8 minus a negative negative 8. So that's a positive 8 over 3 minus 8. Okay, and now we subtract negative 16 over 3 plus 16, this is 5 and a third, so negative 5 and a third plus 16 is 10 and 2 thirds. That would be our area. Okay. Okay. So, basically, once we get once we get this written down, we've done all that before, okay? It's just an, another formula um, to be familiar with. And, okay, this is not a formula that's given on your, or in your formula booklet, okay? Although, it is somewhat of an intuitive formula, the top one minus the bottom one, okay? The one thing I will say, you'll see how this actually goes underneath. This is why on the first slide here, they had this plus K, all right? If I wanted to, I could shift both of these functions up here so that they were both in the positives. The fact of the matter is though, it's we don't have to. We can leave it as it is. Don't let the fact that this goes below the x-axis make you think twice about it. When you're finding area between two curves, it's just top minus the bottom, no matter where they are. Okay? Now, one case where you you will have to kind of use this concept, um, but also consider the negative, is in this case where we're asked to find the total area. Okay? The total area contained by a function in the x-axis. All right? So you'll notice here, we have this cubic function, and here it goes below the x-axis. And um, I mentioned this before. What would I get if I integrated from negative 3 all the way to 1? I wouldn't get the total area. I would get the net, the net area. Yeah. Okay, the net area. So basically, what I want to do um, is I want to break this into two separate parts. Okay? And what you can do is you can think of this as what we were just doing. We have two separate functions here. One is simply the line y equals 0, our x-axis, and the other one is the function we're looking at. Okay? 
So as we did with the previous one, we can find where those two functions intersect, i.e., we're going to find the zeros, right? And you guys know how to do that. Factor out the x, then factor more, and you get x equal to negative 3, 0, and 1. Okay? So now we actually have two intervals that we need to consider. Okay? We have an interval from negative 3 to 0, and we have an interval from 0 to 1. Okay? So when we go to find our integral, I'm going to take two separate integrals from negative 3 up to 0, and I'm going to add the integral from 0 to 1. Okay? Now, for each interval, you need to see which function is on top. Okay? So if I plugged in, and, and basically you just need to consider, because the other function is y equals 0, you need to determine is f of x positive or negative in this case. Okay? If I plug in a negative 1, I get negative 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is greater than 0. Okay? So therefore, f of x is on top in this interval. Okay? So I put that in, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x, f of x minus g of x, so minus 0, technically. I'm integrating that from negative 3 to 0. Then, if I tried, <clears throat> if I try, say, a half to get something between 0 and 1, okay, I'd have 1 half cubed, which would be 1 eighth, 2 times 1 half squared, that's 2 times a quarter, so that'd be plus 1 half. A quarter of 2 is a half, minus 3 times a half. So that would be 1 and a half. Okay? If you add that up, that's less than 0. So um, y equals 0 is on top. Okay? So look at what we're integrating over here for our second interval you're taking 0 minus that f of x, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. Okay? So, we need to do two separate integrals. All right, does everyone understand how we have that set up, though? Okay. And I'm doing it using the formula because it doesn't just work when, say, x is y equals 0 is one of our functions. This would work if we had a sine function and a cosine function. And they're going to intersect multiple times. Okay. Now, for those, because they're periodic and they're going to keep intersecting an infinite number of times, they would give us an interval... But within that interval, we would need to look for intersection points and determine which is on top and which is on bottom. Okay? So, just to finish this one up, x to the fourth over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2. That we're going to evaluate for, um, or from negative 3 to 0. Then we're going to add to that the integral of this. We need to make sure we distribute the negative. Or, 
Yeah, you would you could flip the signs from the other one, or another option is you could pull that negative out and make it minus the integral. Um, what you guys do is kind of up to you. Um, but yeah, so we would add using the first option there. We it's going to end up a negative x to the fourth over four minus two x cubed over three plus three x squared over two. And that's evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay. So let's see, if we evaluate this at zero, we get zero. If we evaluate it at negative three, we get 81 over four. That's a negative 54, negative 27 times two, so minus 54 over three. And then that's gonna be minus 27 over two, okay? So there's our first, um, well, it would be f of a minus f of b. So we need to then subtract each of those. OK? Wait. f of b minus f of a. Okay. So that's why I have to subtract each of those. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to add to that this, evaluated at 1 and at 0, OK? If I evaluate it at 1, I get a negative 1 fourth minus 2 thirds plus 3 halves minus 0. Okay. So let's see. If I combine all that, I've got a negative 82 fourths plus 52 thirds plus 30 halves. We keep uh, combining that. That's going to be negative 20 and a half plus uh, 17 and a third plus 15. Okay. So let's see. That's 32 minus 20 would be 12. 12 and a third minus a half. Is going to be 11 and 5 sixths square units. Okay? So this is a case where even if this were given on your, even if this were given on a calculator portion of the exam, okay, you can't just, you know, plug the whole thing in your calculator without thinking because they want the total area, not the area under the curve, okay? Area under the curve is net area. The total area, you've got to break it into regions <coughs> and integrate each one separately, okay? You can kind of think of it as the absolute value. You're adding the absolute values of the areas. What if they do ask for? If they do ask for net, then you can just take the integral from negative 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. no. All right, so what I want to do the remainder of the time, again, this isn't a, a horribly difficult concept, but there's a, a lot of little details that need to be worked out. So I want to give you guys opportunity to, to practice with this. Okay, there's a number here to work with. Some you're given graphs, like on 10 and 11. The first ones, though, you're not. Um, part 3 kind of gives you a good 
you know, with A, B, and C, they give you a good layout of kind of a good process to follow. Make yourself a sketch, find the intersection points, find the area of the region, okay, and closed. All right, so we're going to take the remainder of our time to work on that and uh, get some good practice in.